this video picks up part two of adding up of the vectors and the sample problem we're going to do is on page 93 of the 2010 edition of Holt Physics and let me bring up what that looks like here this is sample problem C um, general idea here you got this hiker walking 27 kilometers from her base camp at 35 degrees south of east uh, the next day she walks 41 kilometers in a direction 65 degrees north of east. Um, find the magnitude and direction of her displacement between the base camp and the tower she walked to. So sample problem like this, you, you're not given any kind of picture at all, so we have to draw it ourselves. So we start with our base camp over here, and it says she walked at 35 degrees south of east. So when I think about that, I imagine a little coordinate axis over here at the base camp and I'll just draw that in like this you know and which direction is south of east well south of east is underneath this that's facing east and going south of it and then the 65 degree angle said she went north of east and so I, I imagine right here at this point another little axis and again you could draw you know another uh, y axis in here if you wanted to but I don't need to I just need the horizontal ones because they were both both of the east and so I draw that in there and these are the two angles that I'm given 27 kilometers is shorter than 41 kilometers so this is my basic drawing one of the things I gotta warn you about and I warned you about this in page or on the, the first video was your drawings aren't to scale I mean normally you could set up graph paper and make them to scale if you wanted to but the way I got this she starts out here and she ends up over here um, that's my guess and so my overall resultant of her motion is going to look a little something I'll do this in purple starting here ending up here she's going to the right and up but the problem since I didn't draw that to scale I really don't know if she's there or maybe I misdrew it and she really went down here I have no idea so you just have to be careful about letting your picture say oh this is definitely how she moves we don't you don't really know that so as we said the last time, one of the things you want to do is you want to label stuff. So I'm going to label the 27 kilometer vector A. I'm going to label the 41 kilometer vector B. So that way we can start setting up some mathematics. Uh, we want to start breaking these down into components. So as I did before, I will draw some dashed lines here. And in red, I will put the X displacements. So here's the X displacement. This is A in the X direction down here this is B in the X direction and I'm not going to worry so much about drawing those perfectly and then I'm going to do A in the Y direction now A in the Y direction you notice is going down so that tells you some mathematics issues on the next one and B in the Y direction is going up alright so notice how this starts to get a little bit cluttered uh, hopefully the color coding helps you see what's happening here and we can we can actually apply some mathematics so again, I've mentioned this before, what do we want to do is we want to set up a little column. And I want to take all the X's and I want to take all the Y's. So in the X directions for both of these, A in the X direction, so that's this red component right here, is going to be the hypotenuse. And handily enough, I've been given the cosine of 35. B in the X direction, again, goes with the cosine, so that's 41 cosine of 65. And I can add that up. Now if these are cosines, that means over here when we do the Y's, those are just going to be sines. But one of the issues I have to watch out for is this negative sign. Since A in the Y direction is going down, make sure you have that negative sign in there. Because when we add these up, it's minus 27 sine 35 plus 41 sine 65. So if you're playing along, you can take a pause and you can compute these yourselves. Make sure you're in degree mode. The sum of the components in the X direction are going to give me R in the X direction. That gives me about 39.44 kilometers. The sum of the y motions, which is negative 27 sine 35 plus 41, gives me a total resultant of 21.65. This is why I said don't let your pictures lead you astray. Your math will never lie to you as long as you're doing it correctly and you're in degree mode and all that good stuff. This is saying that my resultant vector in the x direction is a positive 39.44 kilometers. So she is going to the right, this x motion, 
So she's going to the right 39 kilometers, and she's going in the positive direction in the Ys 21.67 kilometers. That's up. So when I go to draw my picture, again, I got a lot of clutter over here in this picture, so I'm going to redraw my Rx's and my Ry's. The purple vec is my overall vector, and my estimate, remember at the beginning, was she starts here and she goes up and to the right. And sure enough, my Rx and Ry show that because the math doesn't lie. It says she's going to the right, it says she's going up. Now, if you drew your picture wrong and you had it going a different direction, your math will tell you, well, the picture wasn't right, it wasn't to scale, and she's actually going this direction. So your math will never lie to you as long as you, you know, compute it correctly. All right. So now we have the resultant leg of the triangle in the x, we have the resultant leg of the triangle in the y, and we are now able to do some mathematics to this. All right, so finding the total resultant. Well, that's Pythagorean theorem. So the overall resultant is r in the x squared plus r in the y squared, and then you take the square root of it. And that's why I have it raised to the 1 half. Taking the square root and raising something to the 1 half is the same thing. That gives you almost exactly 45 kilometers, if you don't round any of these numbers off. If you round these, use these rounded numbers I put on the screen, you might get a little different, but I didn't put any rounded numbers in. That leaves us with the magnitude, so now we need the direction of our angle, and so we are at an angle here. Well, how do we compute that? Well, again, over in here, this is the angle we're concerned about, right in here, and opposite over adjacent, that tells us we're interested in the tangent function again. So, again, the pattern has been, if I want to solve for this, you take the inverse tangent of, and I'm sorry, there's an equal sign there. That shouldn't be there. It's a typo on my, my part. Let me see if I can get in there and edit that. guess I can't. Well, ignore this equal signs right here. That's the inverse tangent of ry over rx. I'm still concerned about that. Let me see if I can write over it in white. There we go. Pretend those are next to each other now. So inverse tangent of Ry divided by Rx is going to give you 28.7 degrees. And what of what? Well, here's our angle. That's 27 28.7 degrees north of east. Again, if it goes too fast, you can watch this again. Uh, slow it down, go at your own pace, work the problems by all stretches of the imagination. Again, this is a sample problem on page 93 of Holt Physical Science. No, that's not true, Holt Physics. And uh, one thing I will alert you to this problem, forgot to mention this as I was doing this. I will attempt to zoom in here if I can figure out my zoom features on the... Let's zoom in here a little bit. Notice as they start this problem, they give you the givens, and they write down the givens just like I did, and then they start to draw their own little picture. So here's their own little picture, theta 1, theta 2. Notice how they use a negative 35 degrees here for the first angle, whereas I used a positive 35 degrees. Well, the story behind that is that's how they're going to get their negative sign out later on when they're doing their computations down here, and so that they're only going a certain amount of, of, of distance. That's how they're going to be able to tell. Um, get that subtraction in here. I hate using negative angles because I always worry that I'm going to forget to put them into the calculator or I'm going to worry that uh, I don't write them on the picture correctly or I won't figure out which is a negative angle or not. You know, I know I understand that below the, the horizontal is a negative angle, but you know, wh what if it's in quadrant three? Sometimes I get a little bit confused. But what I don't get confused about is, is my vector going up, is it going down, is it going left, is it going right? And that's how I get my negative signs. So if we go over here, I didn't use a negative 35 here. I was like, oh, A in the y direction is going down. This must be a negative term here. B in the y direction is going up. This must be a positive term here. A in the x direction is going to the right. That's positive. A, a B in the x direction is going to the right. That must be a positive. I can always recognize ups and downs, lefts and rights. That's how I get my positive and negative signs. I don't rely on the negative angles. So if you take a look at your book and your book is using these negative angles, don't let that throw you off. Um, that's just how they think about it, and that's fine. There's different people can think different ways about it. That's acceptable. All right, if you have any questions, make sure you ask me in class. Thank you.